Hey, what's going on everyone? In this more casual review, we're going to be taking a look at the RE100 Vigna Gina. Or at least I think that's how you pronounce it. Really, this seems like one of those kits where there is no right answer. Anyway, there are a lot of kits out there that I want to review that aren't part of the Master Grade line of Gundams, so I thought it'd be fun to go over them in a more casual style. You know, quicker videos, less editing, and of course no real script. Oh, and uh, no real scoring system. I mean, I couldn't imagine trying to keep the scores of all these different grades consistent, right? Still, we're going to be reviewing this kit in four categories. The build, appearance, articulation, and gimmicks. Hopefully this review can give you all the same information as those master grade reviews, but with a little bit less math. Alright, now let's jump into this build. So this is actually my first RE100 kit. I was told they're a lot like mid-tier high grades, but in 1 100th scale. And I can kinda see the comparison. There's literally no inner frame, the knees only have a single joint, and there's quite a few molded in vents here. Still, I was really surprised by some of this part separation. Like these pipes on the shoulders are actually separate pieces, and these purple vents are actually molded in the correct color. The legs also have a fake inner frame where you put grey inside of the armor to allow these three vents to poke through. I have a feeling if this was a legitimate high grade, this all would have been molded in. Much of this kit is undergated as well. It's pretty much all the off-white pieces. It's weird because usually nubs aren't a problem on bright pieces, so this undergating here is kinda pointless. Of course, this was reused for a few premium Bandai kits with a darker base color, so this was probably just Bandai planning ahead. As far as painting goes, there's actually a little bit of a list here, so let's just run through this. First up, this section on the toes is a pretty terrible sticker. Thankfully, good part separation makes this a really quick fix. The bulk of the painting on this kit is found in the legs. There are 4 or 5 circular vents that definitely need some paint. According to the line art in the sample build, you're supposed to use red, then put a little black dot in the center but I decided to go with straight black instead. This paint comes off with alcohol, so I thought I could always start over if I changed my mind. This front vent is probably the worst vent on this kit. All this purple is a single piece, so you'll have to paint around the vent, then inside of the vent. This just gave me Gundam Alex 1.0 flashbacks. This vent on the side of the leg also really benefits from using red paint. I tried with a red Gundam marker, but this grey plastic was just way too dark. As much as I like Gundam markers, sometimes they just don't cut it. Moving on up, I used black for this thicker panel line on the front of the leg, just to make it stand out a bit more. I did the same for this guard on the front of the foot too. Next there are a few vents on the front skirts that look good with some added black paint. There are quite a few black squares around this kit that need some paint as well. Nothing too difficult, but I think they really step up the appearance. I mean they're there, so you might as well use them, right? You could always paint these molded in vents on the backpack too, but eh, I just went with panel lining instead. I'm going to have this kit facing forward most of the time, so I kind of got lazy. And lastly, you could use black for the inside of these purple thrusters. With that list of detailing, you can have a pretty solid looking Vignagina. Speaking of looking solid, let's take a look at this appearance. With this kit coming out concurrently with the Master Grade F91 version 2.0, it seems to have a similar design philosophy, mainly anime accuracy. The proportions here are really solid. It's a little on the slimmer side, but that anime style bulk still shines through here, like in the chest and the front skirts. They're larger than you would expect and have solid curves fitting of that early 90s design aesthetic. I just love it. I also really like the lack of needless details. In my mind, the late 80s and early 90s suits were littered with vents, tick marks, and hatches. It can very easily overload your eyes, you know? This suit decides to go for a more clean look, but you'll still notice some solid tick marks and squares around the kit. There's also this added circular panel line on the inside of the leg. All these little additions really spice up the suit, but they don't overdo it. For me, this is the perfect middle ground. The colors here are really solid as well. The light gray is just perfect, and because of the undergating, you don't have to worry about white stress marks. The purple is a little bit on the dark side, but it's nothing too crazy. Of course, because all this purple is separate, it wouldn't be too hard to lighten up with some spray paint. You only get a single sheet of stickers with this kit, and it's all peel and stick but it has your basic caution signs as well as a great crossbone decal for the head. Thankfully, because this head is more of a flat surface, this decal works way better than it does in the crossbone master grades. Bandai did include a few extra red line decals to reference that old school 1 100th kit. It's a nice touch and I'm sure those ancient fans out there would really get a kick out of them. Of course, unlike that old school kit, you can actually pose this one. So let's dig into this articulation. Like a lot of cheaper kits, the feet are just bricks here. Of course, these ankles can move side to side thanks to a polycap, but it's pretty limited by the ankle guards. You get much more out of this forwards and backwards hinge just above, but still, you're way better off getting this guy onto an action base instead. 
The knees can be a little finicky here. Like the Gundam Alex version 2.0, there's this piece on the back that moves inwards when you bend the knee. It's a really cool idea, but unfortunately it has a tendency to get in the way and straight up fall off if you're not careful. If you want to get the full 90 degree bend from the knee, you're best moving it up and out of the way beforehand. Similar to mid-2000s master grades, the hips are a swivel connected to a rotating poly cap on a peg, so you actually get some decent kicks, splits, and spins. There's also a sliding mechanism here that allows the legs to move forwards individually. I'm sure this would help with some crouching poses. The skirts here are about standard, but unlike a high grade, the front two are independent. The chest features a few poly caps inside that allow for some okay spins and some really solid ab crunches. So you know me, I went straight for that Katoki pose. Next, the shoulders actually have a decent 45 degree pop out, along with the usual lateral movement and 360 degree spin. Like a master grade, the shoulder armor itself is on a hinge, allowing it to move upwards. Moving down the arm, we have the standard 360 degree spin on top and about a 135 degree bend from the elbow. For some reason, you only get a single set of hands for this kit. It's just this generic fist that's used to hold all the weapons. It's kind of lazy on Bandai's part, but thanks to a slot for pegs, I really can't complain here. The head here is on a fairly loose forwards and backwards hinge and a ball joint, so he can look around pretty well. However, this hinge is extremely loose, so he bobbleheads around quite a lot. Lastly, each of these thrusters are independent. I mean, it's just a swivel per thruster, but still, it's cool to be able to line them up however you want. I'm totally cool with these being hinges instead of ball joints, because, you know, if you're like me, half your time is going to be spent trying to line up all these thrusters, so I couldn't imagine how annoying ball joints would be. The articulation here is pretty solid given its bare bones engineering. While this is nowhere near a master grade, or really a lot of modern high grades, you can still get some decent poses here. Also, thanks to a slot in the hands, he can actually hold his weapons, which brings us to this kit's gimmicks. First up is his beam rifle. Despite a very basic build, it actually has a few more than details that I'm sure would look good painted up. The stabilizer on this gun made me a little nervous about how he'd hold it up. Turns out Bandai put the peg really low on the handle, so the stabilizer really doesn't get in the way. However, if you look closely, you'll see he doesn't actually have his finger on the trigger. Thankfully, you don't really notice it if you're not thinking about it, but uh, now that I've told you about it, you're probably going to be noticing it every time. So uh, sorry about that one. Anyway, next are his token beam sabers. They're about what you'd expect. They can store in the back of the skirts though, but you have to completely remove this part to slide them in, which is a bit tedious. Moving on, you get a great looking beam shield. Like the F91, you have to open up the arm generator to plug it in. It's kind of annoying, but it makes up for it by how good it looks. I will say it has a tendency to bump up against the shoulder sometimes, so you might not want to have it plugged in all the time. Lastly, you get a bazooka. Like the rifle, it's a pretty boring build, but thankfully he can actually hold it up. Yeah, he can actually shoot this bazooka, even with the limited elbow bend. One little addition I'd like to mention here though, is this extra hatch for the chest. You can choose between this rounded hatch that I've been using for this review, and this more streamlined hatch. This is actually taken directly from the movie, when the Vig Nagina needs to be repaired after a fight. Okay, now let's wrap this up for some final thoughts. This kit was really fantastic. While it's definitely not as good as a modern Master Grade, it's still a pretty solid build, a fantastic appearance, and it has all the weapons you need. It's pretty much everything I'm looking for in a kit like this. The articulation here is lacking a little bit though. But I bought this kit just to stand next to my Master Grade F91, so it isn't that much of a deal breaker for me. Still, you can put off the three or four poses you'd expect, so I'm sure you won't be too disappointed with that. I'd say if you're into F91 suits, or you can find a good deal on this kit, then you won't regret picking up this Vig Nagina. For everyone else though, you might be more interested in an old school Master Grade or something. They're usually around the same price as this guy, and they're a bit more interesting in my opinion. Alright, thanks for watching, and feel free to leave any questions you want below, and I'm more than happy to get back to you. Also, I'm hoping to alternate between those more intensive Master Grade reviews, and these more casual reviews, you know, just for variety. Really, this kit has me pretty excited about the RE100 line, so I'm definitely going to have to get both the Gun Easy and Zaku Kai. I'm really looking forward to it. Anyway, you can follow me on Instagram where I post updates, work in progress builds, the whole thing. Okay, thanks for watching, and see you next time.